everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a walkthrough of the Good and the Beautiful Kindergarten Language Arts Curriculum. We have just about finished it. We only have a few lessons left. So um, I'll do a walkthrough. These were really helpful for me when I was looking for a new curriculum. I really like to see what's on the inside of the books and a lot of times the websites don't provide very good pictures. Um, also, you will be seeing the work that my daughter has done. We write directly in this book. That's one pro of The Good and the Beautiful is that it is open and go. So you just pop it open and they write directly in the book. So I'll take you through a walkthrough of this. Um, if you haven't already, I have done a full review of both the language arts kindergarten and the math curriculum for The Good and the Beautiful. We will not be continuing with The Good and the Beautiful for next year, first grade homeschool. We're moving on to something else, which I discuss all in the other video. But I still think the walkthrough is super important uh, for those of you that are thinking about purchasing. Um, one thing that's super important to mention is that this may look different than the one that you're looking at purchasing. This is the kindergarten Good and the Beautiful. Uh, however, the Good and the Beautiful revamped their entire curriculum, um, I think it was last year, and so their books look different. The readers that go along with the books are a little different. Um, from what I understand, which I discussed in the other video too, is that they revamped the curriculum to align more with um, Common Core standards, which as an ex-public school teacher, I was not very happy with that. So I went ahead and purchased the older version. So this may look slightly different than the new one that you might be looking at purchasing, um, but it, this will still give you a good idea of what to expect with the good and the beautiful as far as illustration and things go. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so this is the kindergarten language arts and literature. It combines it all in one and this is all you need. So that's what's great about the good and the beautiful. It is open and go. I don't need anything separate other than the small little readers that came with it. Um, this may look different than the one you're looking at purchasing. This is the older version before they revamped uh, into the newer version, which I am told uh, is not as good. So I'm glad I stuck with the old one. Uh, but this walkthrough will still give you a really good general idea of what to expect with the good and the beautiful. Oh, here where it says like third edition, this is what I mean. The edition is different now. All right, so here's the year at a glance. This is kind of nice because it just breaks down the full year. And then it breaks it down by lesson. There are 120 lessons for this kindergarten uh, language arts and literature. This is nice to have if you're um, a planner and you like to plan ahead. It also shows you where the assessments are going to be throughout so you can plan for those accordingly. Tells you a little bit about the course here. Uh, this is really nice. The little mini books that I was talking about in my last video that I had to staple myself, um, which was frustrating at the time. Uh, these are uh, all of them. So they put them all in one list and you can just check them off as you read them. We have finished them all. I just kind of stopped checking there. It does talk about a little kindergarten assessment you can give just to see where your child is at as far as letter identification. And then there are phonics cards that come with the course. They're like laminated yellow cards if you haven't seen those. We did not rely too heavily on those, um, but I've heard they're great if your child needs help with their phonics. Okay, sight word ladders. I recommend tabbing this page if you haven't already, if you're looking at getting this one or if you already have this one. Um, and that is because this is the sight word ladder page. So you will go back to this several times throughout. I, I would say probably every other lesson we're going back to this. Um, these sight word ladders are something for them to practice. They are practicing them three times and they get a check each time they've said them all correctly. Once they get three checks per ladder box, it tells them that they can color an animal over here on the farm. So like the first sight word ladder box says to color the cow. So once she mastered these, she got to color her cow. Then we moved on, she mastered this list, she gets to color the goat. Uh, and then it just keeps going. It's really cute because it gives them a goal. They want to be able to color all of the animals by the end of their 120 lessons. And then we get into unit one. So it does break it down by units and then further into lessons. So you can get an overview. Here's lesson one. A lot of the lessons include some kind of beautiful artwork that we're using as a comprehension piece, um, talking about what we think and making up stories that go with the picture. I really do appreciate this part of the good and the beautiful phonics right into lesson two. So look how short this is like lesson one, talk a little bit about the picture, do a couple phonics exercises and then some sight word practice tracing and then that's it. So if you like something short and sweet, great. I prefer more of like a mastery based type 
organization. Uh, so I feel like this, we jump around a lot, which I talk a lot in my other video about that. So super short lesson. Look at this. This is lesson two. Boom. That's it. Okay. And then you're moving right on to lesson three. You could do a lesson a day. I try to cover two lessons a day just because it was pretty easy for my daughter. Moving on, you can see how colorful it is. That's one thing I will miss about this. Um, there is a script in here. So it, it literally says, read to the child. God put animals on this earth. Animals are a blessing to us. And then um, it goes into the, the skill for that day. So it tells you exactly what to say. Um, also, this just reminded me, this is not a secular curriculum. So if you are looking for that, this is not the one. This is a faith-based curriculum. Um, although it's not too heavy on the religious part, I would say. Lesson eight and nine. I'm just going to kind of flip through a little faster because I want to show you when we get to the, um, the assessment. Oh, this is good too. They put chapter books right in. So this is a chapter book called Bobby and the Big Road, chapter one. They just put it right in the story. So we read this um, every day or every other day for the first couple lessons. There's chapter two. But again, it's like we're skipping around. We're doing comprehension of this chapter book, and then the next day we're working on vowels. So it just didn't seem very cohesive to me. Bobby and the Big Road again, some more artwork. Moving right along, lesson 18, 19, 20, 21, more artwork. If you are looking at the newer version too, um, I don't know if it's the same artwork or if they've chosen new artwork to study, but I really love this part of the curriculum. This too, um, it does include poems every so many lessons that the children are expected to memorize. My daughter loved this. We broke out her karaoke machine and she spoke into the microphone as she was reading her poem. Okay, and then at 25 is the assessment. So the assessment is right in the book. Um, it does have you flip back to the appendix in the back. Uh, some of the assessments are a little longer, but everything is right here in the book. So for this one, she was reading all of these words and I timed her 45 seconds. And then I put a little note that she had to sound these out. The problem that I have is that the next assessment that they do is not the same one. It's something totally different. So I don't get to see true growth. I wish it was the same assessment throughout so that I could see the growth, but they don't do it that way. Moving on to unit two, phonics, lots of phonics. Bobby and the Big Road continues into um, unit two, as you can see. And then here's chapter 10 of Bobby and the Big Road. Some handwriting practice too. We did uh, order the handwriting book for Good and the Beautiful. We just went right to level one. We didn't even bother with the level K and my daughter did really well with it. So if you don't think this is enough handwriting practice, you can always buy that separate book. This was really cute. They have little games throughout um, and I just love how colorful it is. So this was, you know, we played a little game with different all words, A-L-L -L endings, little short stories right within here, poetry. So you can see each lesson, it's really, look at, so B&D recognition, this was really helpful. It came with a little game too that I had to um, print and cut out. Uh, actually, I don't even think I had to print and cut it out. I think it was right in the book and I just ripped it out. Um, B and D again, but then we go right into long vowel sounds and then watch this. 43 gives you a little review, which is rare. You don't always see this. And then we have short words with long vowel sounds, short words with long vowel sounds. And then short words with long vowel sounds. So the point, what I'm trying to make is like, sometimes you get the mastery to where you were reviewing, 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 which I loved. Other times we're just popping right on over to the next skill before we've mastered the first one. This was really cute. It was this little craft um, and we did do this sight word rainbow. So it really has everything. It's like, you know, art, handwriting, phonics, comprehension. Um, you can see this one's called play and pray. So a little bit of faith based stuff there. Um, okay. More DMB. So we didn't do DMB for several lessons and then we go back to it. So that's that spiral approach where we're spiraling, spiraling back to it. Okay. And then it kind of stops you here. Here's the unit two assessment. And it says your child is ready to start section one of the level K reader, which is a, um, kind of like an all encompassing 
chapter book almost with mini stories within it that comes with this um I, my daughter has it in her room right now but that's kind of nice because it tells you that your child's now ready for that unit three phonics 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 spelling you can see too per unit they color code it so like unit three is all red i appreciated that more artwork these were cool circle of sentences she had to circle around and read the sentences Little poster, I actually made a copy of this and hung it up in the in our homeschool room. So silent E, bossy E at the end, colorful little game over here. And then we start some stories about honesty. I liked that, the character building. Circle of sentences. You can see it definitely starts getting a little more advanced. So they start doing their digraphs with the SH, the CH, and the TH. Here's CH. And then they start combining them all. So that was a pretty quick jump. It's like one day of SH, one day of CH, one day of TH, and then boom, you got to know them all. My daughter really struggled with that. Here's one of the mini readers. Um, this is the one that I said I had to staple by myself. <laughs> they give you all these sheets of paper and you cut them and staple them. But again, super colorful. They have the sight words within them that they're learning. This one's the difference between the um, two, two, and two. So that's a nice example there. I just stuck that in the middle. Moving right along. Okay, unit four. Now we've got our endings, inflectional endings. But again, it just seemed like we kind of jumped into this. Like we were doing digraphs and now we're doing these ING endings and the ED endings. And it really, I just, my daughter, I don't think she learns best that way. I don't know if spiral approach is really, yeah, look right into ED. It's not like they're combining ING and ED. We, it's like we forget about ING and we just go right into ED. But, you know, here they do combine it, ED and ING practice. More practice. Some short stories and into unit five, which is now color-coded purple. So that's what I mean by the, the different color coding. This I love, they put in some geography. This is a Noah's Ark painting. This was nice. It was a sorting activity that was right in the book. So we just cut out and she glued right in. So I've got everything right here. If you're in a state where you need portfolios to be checked at the end of the year uh, for homeschooling families, this is great because I can just whip out the book and we've got everything in it. Here we're nearing the end. This is um, kind of where we're at right now. Oh, okay. So writer's workshop. So you've seen now we've gone through the entire book almost, and we are just now getting into these writer's workshops, which they're really just quick writes. Like she just sits down and writes a cute little story. I really wish this would have happened earlier though. That's the only thing I can say is like, I love writing. I feel like it's super important. So anyways, just another little gripe. Here's another little sorting activity. And now we're getting real towards the end. Here's a little slice of a story, some writing practice. Now we're getting into the grammar. We've got the nouns, the verbs, the plural nouns. Here's some ED endings. So that's nice. It goes back into it. That level K reader I was talking to you about, that book that has all the stories within it, it's telling you to start section three now. Your little categories. This is where we've stopped. So we've got 110, 111, 112. Beautiful um, piece of art here. More art. More writing. Verbs. Antonyms. I like that they've included that. Review. There's oral narration, by the way. So if you're into that, oral narration, that's important. And then the assessment, the final assessment. Okay, you do the final assessment, it brings you back into a few more lessons and then yay, you finished the level K course. And real quick, I'll just show you the appendix. These are the assessments. So a lot of it was reading and timing her and seeing the growth for that, which I liked. Reading assessment A, but again, like we never went back to it because she showed mastery to begin with. So I'm not quite sure as far as growth goes. Then we go into reading assessment B, and then here's our practice charts. This, <laughs> this really stressed my daughter out. You can see she got zero the first time because she was crying, freaking out because I set the timer 
and she can't handle that. She does not like being timed. So she has shown growth, uh, not as much as I would like though. And then there's one for Silent E as well. This is cute. We didn't actually do this, but once they memorize the poems, you can put them here. And then here's poems that they can choose to memorize and recite to somebody in the family. Couple optional spelling activities if you feel like you're just not getting enough. And then spelling words check off. This is cool because, oh, go ahead, we didn't really bother, but if they need that visual to show what they've learned, this is a nice little checklist. And that is it for the walkthrough. Okay, so level K, kindergarten, language arts for the good and the beautiful walkthrough. Um, again, I cannot emphasize this enough. This is not the newest edition. Uh, now, a good thing is that if you are somebody who's buying like used curriculum or if you're somebody who doesn't like to write right in the books and you just wanna make copies, you might have access to this version. I really prefer their old version. I think it's a little more rigorous. Again, their new one, they're trying to align it more with the standards, the Common Core standards. Um, which I'm not a fan of. So that's why we're sticking with the old one, uh, at least till the end of this school year, we school year, uh, school year round. Uh, so we're almost done with this and then we are moving on. I still have not quite nailed down what we'll be using next year. I'm really, I'm leaning towards that Charlotte Mason method, uh, one of those curriculums. Uh, but overall, I hope this helped if you're looking into this um, and I will do the math and the science walkthrough uh, in another video. Bye.